human embryonic stem cells really affords a great opportunity to study disease in ways that we've never really considered in the past. And obviously, one application is the idea of transplanting cells back into the body or the brain to replace missing cells. But the other way, one other way that we're particularly interested in is to use the human cells to model human disease. But the simplest way that people started to think about doing this would be to have a disease in mind that you're interested in. And I'll, I'll use a couple of examples. One would be uh, amyolateral sclerosis, which is ALS, or Lou, Lou Gehrig's disease. And the other is Parkinson's disease. And uh, they're neurological diseases, so we're interested in neurons. Uh, and they're genetic diseases, so they have... Um, known gene mutations that are causally related to the disease. And yet, we really don't understand how they cause cell loss, cell damage. And it's very difficult to study these gene mutations in the patients themselves at a cell and molecular level, which is what cell and molecular biologists are good at doing. So the first thing to do is to figure out how to grow the human embryonic stem cells in culture and get them to differentiate fully and completely into the exact cell type that you want to model. So we've co-cultured these human differentiated cells with human muscle cells to see whether or not they can actually make synaptic contact. Then you can begin to overexpress in the pre-motor neuron the diseased gene. So you're basically setting up an entire circuitry within which to evaluate the causal nature of it. You can also look at diseases for which we don't really understand what the genetic basis is. For example, depression, autism, um, other genes that are thought might have a genetic basis but don't, haven't been designed. You can take um, skin biopsies or keratinocyte cells and do IPS on those diseases to begin to look at the, the molecular mechanisms underlying diseases for which we don't really yet know what the mechanism is, but this methodology affords you the opportunity to, to really drill down and understand something about it and maybe reveal what, the, what a common molecular mechanism is. This takes us into a sort of different realm of modeling. There's a real advantage, obviously, is that it is the disease of that individual. It's not a model anymore, it's actually the disease. So you can look at the progression of the disease authentically in vivo. The reason I think that's important in, in all this, this approach of starting from embryonic up to adult is important is because the phenotype or the disease characteristics that we see in an endpoint may have been caused by some event that occurred earlier. And unless you can recapitulate the entire process from the, from the early stage to the mature stage, you may miss it. You may see nothing but tombstones at the end here, which is nothing about the mechanism. So you're not going to be able to reverse anything or ameliorate things because the events occurred at an early time point. So I've been working with stem cells at one way or another for a long time, over 20 years. A missing piece in all of this has always been the relevancy to humans, and it's given us um, it's, it's very difficult to do these kinds of studies that we've been doing in the past in humans. With the advent of having in hand human embryonic stem cells and the ability of those human em embryonic stem cells to give rise to authentic neurons in vitro really opens up an, an angle or a component of research and really any, di any understanding, normal development as well as disease, but now looking at humans and how it happens in humans. And it does make a very big difference.